everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you the Pick a Stick Challenge for August 2017. This is a monthly challenge that uh, we we give out, <laughs> I guess you'd call it, over at uh, Pick a Stick Challenge Facebook group. There's 10 steps. They are randomly drawn, and this month it was Sherry drawing the sticks. Then you follow the the 10 steps and you do them in order and make an art journal page. And so that's what I did. The first step was to add paint using the edge of a card to make lines. A uh, old uh, gift card or credit card that you're not using anymore is a great tool for applying paint in thin layers onto a page. This page already had some green paint that had slopped over from a different page and this is the last one in the book so I had to use it so we're starting out with kind of a aqua green color um, kind of going from dark to light with the idea of covering up that those green splotches that were on the page and then I was dragging the card on its side through the paint to make lines and that wasn't dramatic enough so I decided to use some titanium white paint as well and this is a thicker body paint it's like a medium weight uh, student grade Liquitex basics paint so it has some viscosity to stick to the side of the card and um, these these marks kind of reminded me of what we used to call cheat grass um, growing up from the ground so that kind of gave me the idea that it was maybe grass in the sky or something like that. Uh, second step was to add some lace. This is a crochet lace from Petaloo and I was thinking about one of those those um, like banner things that are so popular now. Every, you're seeing them everywhere in people's art and also like things that you make with stuff and you hang them up and they have those little triangular shaped things or else in the case of the ones that I see the most often they look like paper cutouts and they're brightly colored and they're all over the place here in the southwest they they form pictures by cutting out pieces of paper and I thought if I cut that lace apart so that it would lay better as a um, you know like a swoop you know it, it would not lay down like that if I didn't cut it apart because it's crocheted to be straight but I thought if I did cut it apart it would look like those lacy banners that I see in my area you know at at the school Ramada where kids are having birthday parties or whatever you know I see them I see them a lot I don't know what they're called but I used to know what they're called but I can't remember so I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me what those banners are called so the next step was one that keeps coming up why does this step keep coming up you know we have over a hundred sticks to draw from and and yet the same steps keep repeating themselves and this is one of them draw big so I said to myself well what is big a house is big I could make a cute little house um, a lot of people make these mixed-media houses that are so cute and I really haven't made I might have made it made something like that once and I thought oh well that's what I'll do I'll make a big house I'll make a three-story house with an attic and uh, you know it's a big house it's a house full of of big love so I decided to do that to do that so instead of drawing it onto my page I knew that I was gonna do some paper piecing um, rather than painting it so I decided to make myself kind of a a real sloppy pattern I don't want this to be pristinely straight and perfect because it's supposed to be cute and funky and fun and fun colors fun patterns and so I just drew out the house on a piece of scrap deli paper and then kinda cut it apart just to give myself an idea of the sizes of things and then I have this bag pretty sure that somebody sent it to me in Happy Mail it's a bag of scraps and I don't recognize them as being ones that I have there's a lot of pieces of scrapbook paper patterned paper and um, other scraps like cardstock scraps and things 
pretty sure I got it in Happy Mail. I just don't remember who from, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoever sent me that is probably watching now and I, and should be mentioned. And I'm very grateful for the the bag of scraps because I needed some bigger size scraps, not the ones that I usually use for paper painting, which are all torn into small pieces. And things aren't organized in my studio. There's some stuff here. There's some stuff there. I haven't moved everything. I'm going to go on a trip, so I need to make these videos ahead of time. So I was very happy to just have this this gallon Ziploc bag of scraps that I could pull from. Also, there is some um, a few pieces of tissue paper that another person sent me that was in a box that also hasn't been put away. Um, a whole box of printed tissue paper. So I grabbed a couple of those and a few of the scraps from the bag and made my entire house out of them. I didn't have to get anything else from anywhere. It was all the stuff that's sitting on the table that's in the staging area that I'm trying to sort through and organize and I just haven't gotten to it because I need to make the videos <laughs> because I'm gonna leave I need to have them done so I won't be able to finish sorting all the stuff and moving the rest of my studio stuff until I get back from my trip my big driving trip so I decided um, I was using a, some tissue paper and I decided that if I if I glued the tissue paper onto my background at this point it would be too dark because tissue paper is translucent and you'd be able to see through it and then you'd get that dark green through the paper so I decided to stick another piece of scrapbook paper underneath it that's kind of a light lavender color um, that was from that same bag so that's what I was doing there so the the second and third stories of the house and the um, chimney are all made of printed tissue papers and then the rest of it is made of printed scrapbook papers all from the bag of scraps that someone sent me it's kind of funny that that I would be so excited about a bag of someone's scraps you know but <laughs> I love scraps I love to collage I love little pieces of paper and it's a great way to get ones that I didn't buy. I didn't buy any of these scrapbook papers so it's just it's just fun. It's fun to get happy mail from people and whoever sent it to me knows exactly that I would love that sort of thing so <coughs> excuse me. So I'm cutting out houses and awnings and bunting and all kinds of stuff from uh, you know the pieces of paper sticking it all together then I'm going to stick it all down on my page using Liquitex matte gel medium this is a thicker glue um, it's not the liquidy one it's the thicker one so it will be able to stick down all these different layers of things that I have here and make it all secure to my page this is the glue that I use most often for collage is this Liquitex gel matte medium. I don't like glossy mediums unless I'm using something glittery or shimmery. I like the matte almost probably 98% of the time I use the matte. So the, I was first going to put all the pieces onto the house and then put the house onto the page and then I realized that that's just more layers for me to potentially mess up <laughs> by you know going too hard over them with the brush or something so I decided to to put the house on put the roof on then put all the windows and doors and things on so that was my plan and this is the this is the lar longest part of the page but it's also the uh, focal image so that's not surprising that it would take the longest I think it's cute and it's purple and I like the the contrast between purple and kind of tealy green in the background those two colors to me are very pleasing um, together so that's probably what I like about it the next step was to write a magic spell on your page so I went to Pinterest and I searched magic spells because I don't really know any except for abracadabra and uh, bibbidi-bobbidi-boo <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so um, 
I found this house blessing spell like you would sprinkle salt and then say this to bless a house and since I was making a house or a home on my page I decided that that was a good choice so I'm writing it with a white Posca pen so that it doesn't overpower the page if I'd written it in black I think it would have been too stark and would have competed with the focal image of the page which is the house so that's the reason that I wrote it in white this is um, a fine tip Posca pen and I went over it, some of them a couple times to make sure that it was bright enough so that it could compete with the white lines that I had put on the background with the credit card and I think that's pretty cute I like it so the next thing was to um, oh the next thing was to rip the page like I said this is the last page in my book and there is something on the other side so if I ripped the page I would be ripping the pa the already completed art journal page on the other side of the pa of the paper so that wasn't going to work so I decided to go with the wild card stick which is to make a list and I just put a little list of things that I would wish for my home and for the people in my home which are to be happy and healthy and safe um, things like that and I just wrote them right along the edge of my my banner up at the top and that's make a list which was the wild card stick this time this page today has a lot of writing because there ends up being in yet another writing one <laughs> so the next step was to use a water soluble pencil or crayon I just chose to use uh, my Stabilo all pencil which is a highly water reactive pencil and an aqua brush to just add some shadows around um, the house and all the pieces of the house which help all that paper piecing blend in to the page this is something that I do all the time I would probably have done it even if it hadn't been a step but since it was there you go there's a step <laughs> um, this is a a brush that has water inside the barrel of it so when I squeeze it slightly the water comes out onto this synthetic brush and it just saves me from having to go and dip it into water dip 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 rinse 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 over and over so I also use that pencil to draw a little bit of a ground because I cannot stand it when things are floating without any type of ground <laughs> it really drives me crazy the next step was to use a date stamp and so I dialed in the date that I did this page which when you see it it was a couple weeks ago that I actually did the page um, and then I just stamped it across and made like a pattern of tiles on the roof of my house by using the, the date which it's with an archival ink pad so that if I do decide to put something water soluble over the top not something water soluble but a water medium over the top it won't run I don't end up doing that but if I was going to it would be permanent um, this one is a fun step that we haven't ever drawn in two years uh, add a pop up or pop out feature to your page so I saved the door of my house because I saw that this was coming up and I knew that I could make a door that opened with a little pop out um, something inside of it which ends up being this heart uh, the heart is actually from Happy Mail as well somebody sent me hearts their printed um, painty paper and already cut out but I had to did I did have to trim it down a little bit to fit inside because the door was going to be too big so I folded the heart in half and then in heart again th then <laughs> okay let's try that again <laughs> I folded the heart in half and then in half again so that it was in four sections and then I glued the back of the two edges down to the inside of the folded over door and then let the center part come out so when you open it it looks like the heart is popping out of the door I don't know if that made sense but you can see what I did then I wrote the word home on it um, heart and home you know and there you have a little pop out onto my page that was fun I hope we get that one again next one add an image with the homemade stamp this could be anything this could be mark making tools like you know a, a 
inside of a tube or something but I have a hand carved stamp here that I made in the past I think for one of our challenges I believe and I'm stamping it it's got some sunflowers and I decided to add a little bit of foliage to my page by stamping it in white and going around you know like as if it's growing around the house I love sunflowers I think they're so cool so big and bright and cheerful and then I also used some bubble wrap as a stamp which would be another homemade stamp to make some clouds in my what is now sky apparently so the last step step number 10 was to add a verse from a song so I looked up on my phone a song about home and I found a song named home by Dirks Bentley and I wrote well I started to write the main verse from the song and then I had to make it a little bit shorter to fit but I, I wrote it in between my tiles on the roof of my house and I thought that worked out perfectly so finishing touches I decided to add some color to my flowers using alcohol markers it's my um, new spectrum noir markers I just colored right over the white so that was actually a really cool technique to be able to stamp in white with acrylic paint and then color over it with alcohol markers I will probably do that again someday um, on something else that's you know more obvious but it added yellow to the sunflowers dark yellow to the middle and green to the leaves and just everything was too white it was bothering me everything was like there was so much white on the page um, I also used my Stabilo all pencil to shadow the areas where I had made clouds because they also looked too white if you're enjoying this video please remember to like comment subscribe share and of course down below in the description box there's a link to the Facebook group as well as links to um, my friends pages videos on YouTube where they have used the same prompts that's it for me thanks bye bye